Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Welcome back to Master Delve Theatre. I am still Citanium, although with this accent I am barely recognizable. Today we present part two of Operation Santa Drop. After successfully dropping into a submarine in their bid to rescue Santa from the nefarious forces, pummeling penguins along the way, Aurora, Luth, and Snowball prepare to meet the denizens inside. But what shall they find? Let us rejoin the party and discover the mysteries that lie within. Also, hashtag Master Delve Theatre if you want more episodes like this, or hashtag Master Done Theatre if you'd like me to stop this ridiculous accent. I won't listen, but the feedback is terrific. Enjoy. So you can see the top of the summer sile looks like a, a runway. It looks like where Santa probably takes off because, you know, you can't travel around the world in a, a submarine because oh. landlocked areas are mm -hmm. a thing. You can see there's a hatch close by where you landed. You probably won't fit through it with your parachutes, um, but once you tear them off, it, it should be um, the right size for you to get in. But you can see on the other side of the runway, there look, looks like a bunch of penguins are kind of approaching slowly. They, they might have bazookas and machine guns. And they might, they be... might have bazookas and machine guns. It, it's hard to tell at this distance. And there might be somewhere around three dozen of them. Oh. Do they um, like disco? No. Maybe well, I'm out of options. Feature. Yeah, I'm out of options now. <laughs> I thought that that would work. <laughs> so if you must, you can go down into the hatch, which may lead to the boiler room, but it may not. It may lead into a deadly trap. Wait a sec. I have... Trap finding. Do you want to use it? Sure. What do you like to roll? D20? Yes, please. 13 plus 7 for trap. It definitely leads to the boiler room. So, do you guys want to go in there? Yeah, because three dozen of them is not a number we can handle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't play staying alive that long. <laughs> <laughs> so, you all go to the hatch, tear off your parachutes, and start to climb down as quickly as you can. Climbing down the ladder, you find yourselves in a large industrial room with flickering lights and metal struts. All are lined with tanks of some sort of brown fluid, and a giant device sits in the center of the room. A heavy steel door blinks, blocks the way forward, but there's a, no keypad or button to open it. Looks like you'll have to figure out another way forward. By the way, I would like to um, give a huge shout-out and thank you to my brother for designing all the puzzles for this session. What will you guys do? I start looking around at the walls. Okay, so the walls are covered in these tanks. In particular, you notice there's six really big ones. Or, excuse me, three really big ones. And each one of them has a red light at the bottom. And it seems like they're filled with this hot, brown, bubbling li liquid. It looks kind of milky and sweet. Chocolate? Probably. You have no way to check because, you know, it's behind pretty solid-looking glass. But... Totally hot chocolate. Can can I just check to see if there's any um like animated versions of Tom Hanks around this room? Say that again. <laughs> Sorry, I have I, someone else chattering in my ear. Oh, uh, I just want to know if there's an animated version of Tom Hanks in this room. There is not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's not hot chocolate. I don't know. Anybody's guess now. <laughs> well, what a what a crazy predicament that we are in now. How yeah, we... got a little crispy up above. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly did. I, I do admire your resolve. It suddenly strikes you that it might be a good idea to check the module. You know what? It suddenly struck me that it might be a good idea to check the module. <laughs> so I guess we better go check the module. I think that's what Mr. Puffy Pants would have preferred we do. <laughs> Sorry to railroad, guys, but just nudging oh. you along in the right direction. I am uh... fascinated with this module. <laughs> What is on said module? Yes. Um, it's eight buttons, each a different color, and a readout indicating the amount of chocolate in the three big um, hot chocolate in the three big tanks. The button colors are red, blue, yellow, green, orange, purple, and white. And the um, output reads twenty one and two. Did you miss a color? I might have. I'm I'm just reading from a script, guys. <laughs> uh, I may have missed. Oh, look at this. So do you, um, I may have mentioned that we might have a code DM today, 
we do. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let him hop on real quick so sure. he can help me out. This is actually my brother, the designer of the amazing puzzles that you guys are going to be playing. <sighs> Puzzle designer? The architect. Okay. You shall name him the architect. It might take a minute. It's trying to connect him. Button colors are red, blue, yellow, green, orange, and purple, white, and black. I'm guessing it would be a bad idea to just push all the buttons. Probably. He might cause something to explode. Hello? Hello? Hello! Hey! Hello! Hey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We have reached our cruising altitude of 31,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> this seat belt side is off. <laughs> oh, no, we already took care of the planes. The planes are long gone. <laughs> Don't worry. There was a disco explosion. <laughs> I feel like I've missed quite a lot. Yeah, yeah you, you probably have. Quite. Yeah, I'm not sure the disco had as much to do with it, but it yeah. was definitely a major part. <laughs> the penguin horn, though, totally did. We we turned some penguins into red and black slime. I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aren't you well, proud? Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, uh, hi. I am the Kojium for the night. Um, I was the designer of all the puzzles. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. Perfect. He's also. So. I guess not really the co-designer, but one of the main people who helped me with Roll to Dodge. So he's he's helped me quite a bit with this system, and it's sort of like a, a pet project of ours, and it's really awesome that he could be here. Um, yeah, excellent. That being said. Welcome, Tyler. Yeah, so so right now, uh, I think we're dealing with uh, what appears to be a giant uh, thing of uh, hot chocolate uh, that does not have an animated Tom Hanks nearby, and ah. I don't know. I know, missed opportunities. But you know what, that's okay. Um, so we're looking at these eight buttons. Have you guys investigated the rest of the room yet? Butterfly, I believe, looked at the walls. I think so are you guys investigating the module right now? Yes. Would each of you roll a d20, please, and tell me the result? Whee! That's a ten. Twenty. Ha ha! Fifteen. Ha ha! Butterfly discovers a small... <laughs> Note taped to the bottom of the module. It reads... The suspense is killing me. Oh, okay. I, I put it in the chat. I see. In case of emergency, 12 7, 19. I don't know... Suddenly, DC comes to the stark revelation that White has something to do with the Fibonacci sequence. Does everyone know what the Fibonacci sequence is? Yep. Yes. One, six, okay, one. good. Just making okay. sure. Okay. No. Not one six one. One point six. About one point six one. One to one point six one. The ratio. Fibonacci. Fibonacci sequence. Yeah. Okay, I'm confused. Fine. I'm looking it up. <laughs> I'm really curious. Golden ratio. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Golden ratio is one to point one point six one, which has yes. uh, which which has to do with the Fibonacci sequence. Yes. So. Yes. 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 I'm there you yes. Go. You're right. Uh, <laughs> you have me confused for a minute. I was thinking of the. Who's the rainbow part. unicorn detective now? <laughs> All right. Okay. Well done. It, it's not very often that someone is more knowledgeable about math than I am. Oh, yes, it is. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, you go, Tyler. You call him out on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so white has something to do with the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. So uh, it occurs to me that uh, the white and the Fibonacci sequence are somehow related. How did you learn about the Fibonacci sequence, Luth? Well, limited fingers. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, makes sense <laughs> to me anyway. <laughs> it uh, sounds perfectly fine. I know a thing or two about limited fingers. Uh, so how, how, how do you propose we use the Fibonacci sequence in order to solve this puzzle? I'm not that far yet. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need to. You can certainly start just randomly pressing buttons. <laughs> Oh, I was getting ready to say, if you guys want to randomly press buttons, nothing's going to blow up. I promise you that. Man, you're making me a liar on camera, Tyler. You know, I want to believe you, and at the same time, I have questions about... Uh, uh, you know, Trust the guy who made the puzzle. I did not put anything in the puzzles that would blow up. Okay, well, I'm going to hold you to that, because okay. if I do blow up, I will never trust anything you say again. <laughs> um, yeah, and you'll also be dead. So, yep, there's that. that. There's that, too, yeah. Knowing that the Fibonacci sequence sounds really important, uh, Snowball is going to just take one of his hooves, and he's just going to hit the white button. Choose a tank. Choose a tank. Um, yep. Tank one, two, or three. 
One, two, or three? Oh, okay. Um, you have the option of door number one, door number two, or door, door number three. Oh, I'm gonna what? get a zonk. Oh, darn. Um, oh, I don't know. Wayne, what should I pick? I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with uh, one. Door number one. The tank resets to zero. Okay. So that taught me nothing. Current read at zero, one, two. Okay. Okay. Anyone else want to hit the button? The tank. The number on the tanks need to be in the Fibonacci sequence. If you guys want, you can make checks to give so that we can use to give you guys hints. But it, that would be things like knowledge checks, perception checks, probably like intelligence checks, things like that. Insight would probably help. Let's see. I have perception. I have logic too. Logic will help. Logic sure. would be good. Okay. So. What you but verify? Anything you want to do? I'm looking. Well, I guess if I used logic, I could at least figure out if uh, if the current readout is supposed to relate to the Fibonacci sequence. Yeah, you could. Okay. Okay, you'll get a plus, I think, six bonus to this. No, plus four. Plus four. I'll take whatever you give me. That's fine. <laughs> so you'll um, roll a d20 and yep. add four to it and tell cool. me the result. Okay, that ends up being 21. Okay. All right. So... You know that the readout, the readout you want has nothing to do with the Fibonacci sequence, but it, it does have to do specifically with that note that you found. Okay. Gotcha. I so have a praise. A praise? That might help. Yeah. You're, it's, you're, it's worth giving it a shot. Okay. D20 plus three. 19. The module is worth about $19,000 <laughs> in um, Amer American monies and all seriousness. Please, Tyler, tell them what they've won. <sighs> Apparently something worth 19000 <laughs> um, Can we steal the console and just leave? <laughs> you learn that if you hit the blue button, it will put the second tank closest to where it needs to be. That's the closest way you'll be able to get it. Well, no, wait, wait. If you hit the blue button, it will take the second tank the closest it needs to be to the value you need without going over. Oh, that was oh. not at all a vague clue. <laughs> and since you rolled so well, I'll throw in that the yellow button adds plus three to the first, minus three to the second, and nothing to the third. Plus three, minus three, and... Okay. Nothing. Plus okay, three. I'll, I'll put that in the it was, it was a very good roll. So. Okay, great. Which tank does it get it closest to? To the second. second. To the second, yes. So if you hit the blue button, it will take it up the closest you can get without going over. So then yellow... Plus three, minus three, zero. Uh, I don't have zone of truth. That would have been so effective right now. I could have just used it on the GM. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and of course, just pushing buttons is available too. Okay. That will help you figure out what you need to do, what they do. Perfect. Well, you know, Snowball has not met a button that he does not like. Uh, and so now that uh, we kind of know about blue and, and white, in yellow, I guess, uh, well, you know, orange is one of the best colors, so I have to assume that hitting the orange button will do wonderful things. So he's going to hit the orange button. She's attacked. Oh, oh, Wayne, <laughs> don't tell me. Oh, no. Uh, 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 the, the third one, the third one this time. Tanks one and two each rise by one unit. Oh, okay. Look, Butterfly, three. you now know that um, hitting the blue button will now get you even closer to the amount you need for it. Does anyone else want to hit a button? Because DC, you're very quiet over there. Do you want to hit a button? Yeah. I'll try the, <laughs> I'll try the green. I mean, I'm green. It's good. Let's go to tank you three. Think... Okay, so that tank goes to four. Oh, hey! Look at that. Very good, Luth. Your deductive reasoning is staggering. I, I hit a button. There wasn't much deduction there. <laughs> <laughs> well, small victories. Small victories. I mean, I'm green. It was green. It seemed natural. You know what? I'll, I'm going to just say this. You're plus two to brilliant. <laughs> All right. Well, so, Butterfly, maybe would you like to hit a button? Um, I'll hit red. Red. The first tank goes to two. The second tank goes to four. The third tank goes to seven. Book Butterfly, because of your appraise skill, you now know that by hitting the blue button, the second tank will now go over the limit you needed. But 
the third tank is equal to the second is equal to what you need for the second tank if that makes sense if it doesn't make sense you can tell me because i don't make much sense in general so <laughs> i don't know that almost made sense but then it didn't all the time. okay so let me explain it like this if you hit the blue button now the amount the second tank would raise would be more than you needed but the third tank is exactly what you would need if it was the second tank so if you swapped the second tank and the third tank, the second tank would be in a, the perfect place. I see. So when I'm choosing a tank, it actually, like, it's, it switches the tanks? No, it does not. Oh, okay. There's no switching of tanks. Ah, uh, that would you be You guys can so still make checks, and you still can hit buttons. I like buttons. Uh, Snowball is going to hit purple, because uh, he is not purple. Choose a tank. Three. That tank goes to five. That tank goes. The other twos are to rise by three five seven five is that right the the second tank is now in the perfect position book butterfly you don't want to change it you can you can tell because the light in front of the second tank turned green so we need to make sure we hit buttons that do not change the second tank let me see let me let me do one thing here i'm going to i'm going to use my logic skill one more time and i want to make a check i just want to find out what actually happens when we get the right combination in? Like, what does this control? Don't even, you don't even have to make a check for that. You assume okay. it controls the door. Okay, excellent. And hot cocoa. Yes. <laughs> Once you get the door and warm Christmas drinks to boot. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> that's, that sounds terrific. That's a great deal. That's wow, a... that's a great deal. Tell me wow. more. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a zonk. That's the new car out of this whole thing. Can I roll to check? Because I don't want to hit the button, but I'm curious about the button. Is there anything that I could learn from a logic check on black? Yes. Okay. Did you get a, you get, I think you get a plus four, but let me double check. Plus four. Yes, that's right. Okay. So I had gotten a 16, so I guess 20. Um, if you hit the black button, it rounds the amount. It halves the amount in each tank rounding down. Halves the amount in each tank rounding down. Okay. Let's see here. Could I do a insight check? You could. On, uh, red. I think your bonus is going to be... Is it plus five or plus six? It's plus six. Uh, Thirteen. So, was that including or the plus six? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know that if you hit the red button, it adds three to the third. You don't know about the other two tanks. It definitely adds something to the other two tanks, but you don't know by how much. Okay, so that's what Can red I does. use perception? Mm-hmm. Only anything in particular, in particular, or just perception? I don't know. Nothing in particular. D20, you get a plus four to it, I think. Yep, plus four. Oh, if you guys want, you can make group perception, group um, checks by rolling um, D6s, all of you rolling a D6 and seeing what results you get. So if you guys want to make, like, a group check to try and figure this out. What did you get, Book Butterfly? Eleven. You notice a spider crawling out along the wall, yes. and you realize that when you hit the red button, the tank, you remember that when you hit the red button, the tanks went from 124 to 247. Um, so you guys are learning lots of things about buttons. I, this, is, this is a master class in button learning. So. You actually know what three of the buttons do. Perfect. Actually, you know what more of the buttons so, do. Anything. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah. write it down. The red button. You're going to hit it? No. No, I just thought of something, but... Does someone want to hit a button? No, I'm scared to hit buttons. Okay. Because we're in... The second tank is what it needs to be. So... Exactly. So if I hit buttons, it's not it's going to change it. Just so that I'm aware, we're currently at 575. That's, that's right. That's where we're at. Okay, we're 575. I've never met a button I didn't enjoy pushing. So it might make more sense now if I investigate this white button yet again. I'm going to try to hit it. Because I like Fibonacci. I knew, I knew Fibonacci. Choose a tank. Uh, two. Um, it goes up to eight. The other two tanks stay the same? Yes. Okay. I'll eight. try orange in tank one. Each other tank gets plus three. Somebody... Yellow to the second tank should get a minus three and bring it back down. Yes. So let's do that. The tanks move to eight, eight, eight. Blue gets us closest to the right number for two. Without now it goes one. over. You're already over the number you need for blue, unfortunately. So, so blue doesn't do anything for us. It can. I mean, it does something. You just don't know what yet. Okay. What happens if I just hit all the buttons at the same time? 
I did promise no explosions. <laughs> you did? I did, so I can't so... use that. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> like, if I just, like, if I, I have four hooves. If I can just hit four buttons at the same, oh, and I got the horn. I could hit five buttons at the same time. It will teach me nothing but thought. What I'm really going to do is uh, I'm going to use a, a logic check because I want to nail down what orange actually does. Go ahead, roll. Yep. Bug Butterfly, would you like to make a perception check or hit a button or something? No, go ahead, uh, Snowball. Okay. Snow Snowball uh, rolls a 17, and I, I think he gets four for a bonus, but okay. I'm not sure. So or, with orange, you choose a tank at an amount equal to half, rounding up, of, of the units in that tank to the other two tanks. Rounding down? Yep. Rounding down. Rounding Jesus. up. You, it will Rounding add an amount. Up. Say that again slower. <laughs> or put it on the chat. One of those two things works. Yes. When you choose that tank, the other two tanks raise by an amount equal to half of the amount in the tank you chose. So, for instance, if I were to hit it now and choose tank two, tank one and tank three would raise by four. Yes. K. Gotcha. Man, I could just spam orange. I will hit orange and choose tank two. The light on the first tank turns green. Oh, the okay. tank levels are now 12, 8, 12. <laughs> Here we go. Would someone like to make a perception check? I'll do that. All right, go ahead. 17. You notice a convenient tank unit locker on the back of the tanks. I'll throw you a bone there. Okay. You're not sure what it does, but it probably has something to do with locking you the units of tanks. That's All awfully right. convenient. <laughs> it is awfully convenient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of fudging things. Yeah. You're, you're going to go lock? Okay. All right. Because number one's at what it needs to be. Yeah. So technically, so technically, we just have to worry about the numbers on, on two and three. Two and three. Yes. <laughs> and we know what two needs to be. Yes. Yeah. We know what three needs to be, but it needs to be a whole lot higher than what it's at. Because if I hit orange again it would get you closer yeah i guess i'll hit uh i'll hit orange again and i will uh choose tank two i'll do a insight to try to figure out the purple uh that was only an eight on the purple button it might be helpful to hit purple but it might not be that's your insight that's 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 very informative <laughs> thanks for that um now if i used logic on purple because I feel bad that he didn't learn anything from it. My finger goes towards it and then I go, hmm. <laughs> no, no, it's it's all right. It's it's all right. You know what? Let's work this out together. It would be fun that way. <laughs> yes, let's do a group like thing. Something? Who rolled these sixes? What'd you guys get? I got a five. Can I add exception to that? Everything's already added to it, so yes. So the plus 14 that James put in, you guys get a plus 14 total bonus to this. So 5, oh, DC, okay. what you you have? Well, I brought the average down with a 1 I'd... on the die. <laughs> so I'm... that's the beautiful thing about the system. Because you got a 1, it's actually a minus 2. We'll go with a minus 1. So now we're at 18 total. Okay. Um, and I have a 4. I have a 4. Okay. 22. Okay. Cool. If you push the purple button... It will set the third tank exactly where it needs to be. And it will also take the second tank within one of where it needs to be. You know, I think it might behoove us. See, I made a hoove joke. To hit the purple. Okay. Did you like my hoove joke? Yes. Yes. You, uh, all, all right. Excellent. I, I, I caught it, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. But I, really don't I, have a lot of time for I am not here. I <laughs> am not one with your hooves. So not enough for you can be your play. hoof. Sh should we all push it together? Because this feels like a group effort. Sure. Let's huh. do that. Alright. I'm a little horse, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you're not helping anything. <laughs> Thank you. I actually am, so I think I'm the little horse here. Yeah, it might be possible. I guess we're I guess we're hitting that purple button. So if you hit the purple button, the third one goes up to nineteen. Perfect. The light in front of it turns green. Mm -hmm. The second but um the second one goes down to six. Can we lock in that third tank? You may. Alright, so yeah, lock in the third tank. And okay. you know what? 
I think I'm going to hit white and choose the second tank. Okay, it goes down to five. Oh, well, that didn't help me at all. I wouldn't say that, considering there are other things you know. Can I hit red? Yes, you may hit red. It goes up to seven. It turns green. The door opens! (laughs) You are finally out of this forsaken hole of hot chocolate. (laughs) And the entire time, Snowball is just thinking, Fibonacci was evil. I don't even know how he applies to this situation, but I never want to meet him again. He was terrible at that party. I guess, though, we might as well go through the door. All right. You guys walk through a hallway, and it's painted beige, and there's these nice Christmas pictures hung on the walls. And seeing, and you see this one, Christ, this one picture of this snow falling down in a peaceful valley with smoke coming out of chimneys and a starry night. And you look at it, and it fills you with determination. All your HP and MP are restored. My wounds have been healed by the Christmas spirit. Hey, I feel pretty good. We're doing good stuff here. (laughs) It's amazing what a little bit of seasonal cheer can do. Yeah. I don't know why the room is beige. Santa likes the color beige. Does he? You head down. Well, you know, beige is the color of cookies. If you're doing it wrong. Um... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if you set out a, a plate of beige cookies for Santa, he's never coming back to your house. Here's some gray milk to go with your beige cookies. <laughs> you enjoy. Anyways. Mary so you guys. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Uh, Anyways, you guys head head down the hallway, and you turn a corner, and you step into this large room. It's industrial. There are conveyor belts and um, big machines that are humming and whirring away and flashing lights, and there's a bunch of elves standing around working on things on the conveyor belts. They're putting them together and taking them apart and things like that. Should we introduce ourselves to these very jolly elves? You can. You can try to sneak around them. Or you can make a perception check. Well... Given those options, I guess the perception check is probably what I'm going to go for. <laughs> well, my perception roll, I got a 15 on my dice. And okay. whatever, I, whatever I get for a bonus is even... Maybe I get just luminosity as a bonus. So you got 15 and the bonus is what? Uh, a four. million. Plus four. 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 You got 19 total? Yes. Okay, uh... so looking around, you realize the elves are building weapons. Okay. Grenade launchers, jack in the boxes, like, yeah. explosive devices, etc. Do they look happy while they're doing it? <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't look. Okay, good. <laughs> they don't <laughs> really the look. With the penguins. This, <laughs> it's the military industrial complex. Everyone, we have to stop it <laughs> immediately. <laughs> they look brainwashed. They do. They look very brainwashed. On the other side of the room, you see a door. If you can get through it and get past all these elves, you might be able to figure out what's going on and s- fix the problem. Also, the door does look reinforced, so if you can get through it and slam it shut behind you without any elves following you through, you may be able to f- avoid this combat altogether. You also notice, notice a conveniently placed um, closet f- um, full of elf costumes. <laughs> I'll give you the option of sneaking through since we're well, technically only supposed to be playing till midnight. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm half an elf, so. Yes! That's perfect. Yes. I'm That's gonna actually... be a turtle elf. <laughs> a elf. <laughs> a tort elf? You're a tort elf. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. too. It's like a tortellini, but an elf. But with an elf, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teflon. 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 Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. if you were a turtle elf, you'd be tef- Telf, which is like Telfon. Yeah, Telfon. It's a fluoropolymer. Nothing sticks to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I'll put on the little hat. Okay. Get the little Everyone coat ex- up over my shell. Everyone attempt a disguise check. Can Snowball attempt to be the shelf? Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, gonna... There's so much beige around here. Maybe he could disguise himself. He has area you... manipulation. Oh, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. 
Are the elves going to sit on the shelf? I are you guys gonna become elves on the shelf? That's that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> Half elf on a shelf. Half elf on a shelf and a telf on a shelf. <laughs> a unishelf. Yes. It's a unishelf. So the disguise goes terrible, mostly because I'm a large turtle and it probably doesn't fit right. What did you roll? A one. <laughs> Man, you're like There's a There's no such thing as a telf. <laughs> I wanted to be a dentist. <laughs> you can't be a dentist. A dentist? Are you crazy? You'll never work in this town again. You're a couple of misfits, eh? You can be independent together. That's right. <laughs> if I use area manipulation, can I make myself appear to be a shelf? Yes. Cool. Okay. <laughs> what am I rolling yes. for? What am I rolling for? Shelf morph. A 20. A 20? A D20. Okay. You need at least a 12 to succeed. Well, I got an 18. I love shelves. <laughs> <laughs> you are the first, world's first walking shelf with a horn. Perfect. <laughs> Can I make the horn just look like a festive candle since I got an 18? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you bet. I'm going to use my light ability so that it kind of looks like a little flickering flame coming out of the front of the horn. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Disco flame horn. Disco flame horn, yeah. <laughs> Very inconspicuous. No one's going to notice at all. Perfect. These elves are gonna not, aren't gonna know what hit them. Boy, I hope they're real brainwashed, or <laughs> otherwise <laughs> this is gonna be bad. I'm, am I rolling a 20? Yes. Yes. Jinx. 10. You succeed on putting on your elf costume. You look substantially less like a half elf and more like an elf. Okay. You're you're sort of three quarters elf now. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a poorly a poorly disguised turtle. I Portal. imagine it's kind of terrifying, like half elf, half turtle, but just not right in any configuration of either. <laughs> you put. A I'm thinking elf you're just too tall because all of these elves yeah. are just like short. And <laughs> right. Stout. And and if a turtle's that big, couldn't you just put like the little elf hats like on your claws, claw uh, hats? <laughs> So, are you guys going to sneak across the room now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. you sure. That. You guys can roll stealth checks, uh, which will be d20s. DC gets a minus two to his stealth check, because he's in a terrible costume. Overall, though, I mean, that's not too bad. Um, no, it's not. It's like the opposite of Buddy the Elf. Instead of an elf <laughs> trying to yeah. uh, mix in with a crowd of humans, and you, it's a turtle trying to mix in with a crowd of elves. And you know, sometimes maybe that works in your favor. Like, you know, you're so noticeable that no one wants to look at you. You exactly. know, like how hiding in plain sight, you know how they do that? Maybe they think he's a stuffed toy or something. Oh, <gasps> yeah, you could, just play, you could just play that up. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, with the minus there, that winds up being a four. Ooh. Well, uh, I, oh. I, I got an 18. Okay. Me too. Oh, okay, sweet. so you guys make it safely to the other side. You're waiting at the door. DC is ma trying to be as stealthy as possible, which is hard, because he's like a bull in a china shop, or more accurately, a turtle in a um, toy shop. Why did that phrase and... ever become popular? Man. <laughs> Can't Me, G <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so... He just rolls off the tongue, too. You're sneaking them on through, DC, and your shell whacks into the back of the head of one of the elves. And he and turns he... around with his brainwashed expression, and he looks at you and says, Get back to work. And they're all kind of, okay. like, looking at you now. So now you have to work so and make... The I'm going weapon. to, uh, if I could, I want to spend a key point and use Step of the Wind just to get myself right into that door right away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can do that. What do you roll a d20? Okay. Please don't be a one. This has been going so well for you tonight, DC. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been brilliant. Do I add anything to, the, to this roll? I don't know. Do you add anything to this roll? That's a great question. Well, what'd you get? I got a 10. Ooh, let me look at the ability real quick. Sorry, I'm struggling finding this. Step it's, on, gonna... it's under the key point abilities. Okay. So you're key basically going to leap to the doorway? Am I understanding that correctly? Basically, yeah. Yeah, you make it. Okay. You're going to get at least a plus four to that. And all the elves kind of look around like, where do you go? And they look over the door, and they see you three standing there, and one of them starts shouting. I just kind of shove them in with my massive weight as I'm <laughs> going in and close the door behind me. As <laughs> like, you bolt that door tight. Like, that went well. 
<laughs> it did, it went very well. You got through that combat, and you didn't have Ooh. to fight a thing. Well... Which is good, because those are Santa's elves. Going according to plan today. So, you end up in what looks like to be the elves' living quarters. And no one has to do anything here, I'm just gonna narrate here for a second while I get to the next thing. Or a small portion of the elves' living quarters, anyways. And you're walking around, and you're looking at stuff, and these elves have some pretty weird stuff in the living quarters. You find... Seven cookies, flight dust, Malhov cocktail. I'm not. I'm not pronouncing that right. I know I'm not pronouncing that Molotov. right. Molotov. Molotov cocktail. Molotov cocktail. Thank you. A very fruity cocktail indeed. A mirror that um, Snowball happened to look in and admire himself like a hand mirror, and it, it screamed at him. What yeah. a rude mirror this is! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not and like the mirror. There's a back pointy home. elf hat. Aurora put it on and it started insulting her in Shakespearean English. A what? Wait, what? Oh my. A, a pointy hat. And Aurora puts it on, and it starts insulting her in Shakespearean English. These are all your things now. Congratulations. And, and a high-velocity potato gun with 20 rounds. <laughs> potato gun. A high po- okay. high velocity. Freeze, I have a potato. High-velocity <laughs> potato gun. With 20 rounds. With 20 rounds. Oh, wow, 20 <laughs> rounds. That's a lot of spuds. I can work with that. You're not going to hash it out with anyone. You're just going to point their potato oh, gun in there. No. Well, that was a potato pun, Yeah, wasn't it? Um, You'll have to keep an eye on it. I'll have to ferment uh, my opinions on that potato gun. All eyes on this gun. See how see how that works? Because it has the uh, eyes. But I'm tiss. That joke wasn't very appealing. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. That's a nice That was golden. So to recap, uh, sev- you said seven cookies, okay, mm-hmm. and the, the Molotov cocktails, okay, yep. which maybe they flying used dust to too. flying dust, okay, that I did not have written down. Oh. A pointy hat, a mirror that screams at people a, that look in it. A mirror that screams, okay, it's great. like a hand mirror, so you don't have to like whip How, wait, it out of your. Back. I would like, I would like to ask a very important question. Yes. How did the unicorn look in the hand mirror? It was lying face up on a dresser, and he looks down. No, okay. Uh, Problem no, solved. What you do is that the hand mirror has a, one of those little holes in it, so that you can put it on a hook. He just he just put it on his horn, and then the mirror drapes oh. down into his face. Clever. See. And then it screamed at him. Then it screamed at him, and I and and he threw the mirror off of his horn, and remarked about how rude the horns and the hats are in this place. Would you roll a d20, please? Yeah, I can roll a d20. A five? <laughs> you shatter the mirror. It Perfect. is now no longer... Okay, you <laughs> shatter the mirror. Instead of screaming at you, it makes a bunch of high-pitched whining noises that sound like a l- bunch of mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, would anyone like a mirror? You also find the door to the next room. Would you like to enter it? Well, the, the last door led me to a broken mirror that screams at me, so I don't know if I want to go through the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, How about DC and Book Bird Flyers? There's some more exploring okay. you want to do. Did everyone collect the items? Yeah, I think so. The flying dust, the potato gun, the mirror. The... Pointy hat of Shakespearean insults. Pointy yeah, hat of Shakespearean yeah, insults. I, I assume you're still wearing that Aurora Book Butterfly. Oh, man, I should probably take it off if we're going to go to the next room. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, open the door and go on. You enter a large room painted in vibrant hues. Can I, can I have this? Can I, this is my favorite puzzle. I've had so much fun writing this puzzle, guys. This is my favorite puzzle. You enter a large room painted in vibrant hues. The Three walls times. Are, the, walls are <laughs> <laughs> the walls are lined with toy-sized enclosures and ramps leading to the floor. And the whole room is in chaos. Doors are open, and animals just small enough to squeeze are running everywhere. You see a green bass wriggling its way through the air, a miniature knit lion and a miniature knit tiger rustling on the ground, a small yellow bear with a ribbon, and a bow wandering aimlessly, and a sock monkey swinging from the light fixture with a toy keychain. All the animals seem quite friendly. On one wall next to the ostrich enclosure is a large chest of drawers alongside a board with notes and a diagram of the room. On the other side of the room is an open doorway leading ahead. I'm going to make a perception check to see if there's any mushrooms in this room. I get an 11. There are no mushrooms no in this mushrooms. room. Well, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> he wants to make sure there's no weed. I want to make sure I, want to make sure I didn't just hallucinate all of this. <laughs> it's the door ahead, the doorway ahead of you is wide open. The door ahead of us is wide open. Yes. It's the only other exit to the room. 
well, I know that this can't end nearly as easily as I would want it to, but uh, Snowball yeah. will attempt to go through that open door. As you approach the door, a strange feeling washes over you. There is unfinished business here, compelling you to stay. Is this like one of those invisible barriers in a video game? Like, <laughs> where it's like, you can't leave sort this area of. until DC, you can- DC, like I can make an insight check. Yeah. Alright, what am I adding to this? Should be a plus six, I think. Six would be a twenty-one. It occurs to you that you should address the elephant in the room before moving on. Oh, hey, there's really an elephant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, no, this a... is terrific. You are learning there's at the a... exponential rate. I think there's... we need to talk to it. Yes, there's an elephant in the room. He's a small stuffed elephant. Go up, go it's on. adorable. Why, it, hello. It toots at you. That's yeah. adorable. <laughs> That's what I said. It's adorable. Can I go look around? Yeah, sure. Upon investigation, the room contains many animals, including the sock monkey, the bass, a bunch of clockwork birds, the knit lion and tiger, a stuffed yellow bear with the ribbon, gray stuffed parrot, a stuffed elephant, some water buffalo, um, a few parakeets, all sorts of animals. I basically listed off the most important ones in this context. Also, the yellow stuffed bear with the ribbon waddles over to you and hugs you on the leg. Roll for adorable. Bear. Yeah, make a d20 check. Wait, who's making a d20 check? Book Butterfly. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. 16. Okay, you managed to keep from crying because it's so cute. Okay. okay, so also, there's the drawer and the board with the diagram of the wall of all the animals' uh, habitats in the room. It shows where they belong, what animals, and it has sets, a sets of notes, feeding schedules, and stuff like that. If you, would you like to look at anything specifically? I will go to the chest and see what's inside the drawer. Okay. All the drawers are locked except for one. The drawer contains big containers um, of different kinds of candy. One has Swedish fish. The other one is a big bunch of small yellow square candies. You're free to try some. I'll try the yellow candy because we don't know what it is, and I'm hoping it's not poisonous. It's not poisonous. It reminds you of a banana. What's the monkey's feeding schedule? On the board, there's a diagram of all the animals. Blah, 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 blah. Um, one note has a list of animals and what to feed them. Bernard likes banana, Charlie eats schools, meat for James and John, nerds for the birds, Sam eats peanuts, and Smarties for the Amarillo. You can't find anything on when to feed them, but this definitely helps you in figuring out what to feed who. All right, so I'll give Bernard some of the bananas. He, t he takes one from you and puts it up to his um, sock monkey mouth, and he holds his hand away, pulls his hand away, and it's disappeared. And you, you're not really sure where it's gone, but he's definitely eating it. So he holds out the keys to you. I take the keys. Cool. Anyone else want to do anything while we're going through this? How many Molotov cocktails did I get in the last room? <laughs> just, just, just one. If I um, threw it in the center of the room, would everything get destroyed? How do I say, how would I say this politely? <laughs> You'll all die. <laughs> <laughs> this is an enclosed space. This may be the How one about time. the potato gun? There, there are 20 rounds. How many animals are in this room? A lot more than 20. <laughs> Some of them look lethal. Well, you know, you gave me these what? tools, and now I'm wondering if I should be utilizing them. Okay, okay, okay. The keys look like they go to the chest of drawers. DC, you want to do something? How big is the elephant? About the size of... A toaster. It's about the size of a toaster. About the size of a toaster. But it's inside its enclosure, and the enclosure is locked, so you can't pick it up or do anything, inter really interact with it except through the bars. The keys also go to the cage, the, or, or go to the enclosure, so you can unlock all the enclosures now and um, move animals in and out and stuff. Oh, hey, there's a lock on this. Got a key? Does someone Hi. have a key? Poor little elephant. He's adorable. He should get out. I have, do I have the key to his cage? Or yes, you do. You have the, so, basically the master key ring to everything okay, to, in this yes, room. Please. I go over and unlock the elephant. The elephant comes out and trumpets at you. He's hey. very pleased to be out. All right. Dude. So the keys also the keys can unlock any cage in any drawer, any of the drawers in the chest of drawers on the wall. All right. Can I go open them up and see what's in them? Yep. They hold. A bunch more kinds of candy. There's gummy steaks, nerds, smarties, peanut m ms Mike and Ike's, licorice, Hershey's kisses, Hershey's kisses, an assortment of jelly beans, basically any other candy you can think of. I pick up some Swedish fish, not really 
Uh, okay, the Swedish fish wriggle in your hand. It feels really weird. Ugh. Ugh. I didn't know they... Swedish fish actually did that. Do they, do they? they seem alive. It's I... alive! It's alive! I feel like there should be like an OSHA regulation saying that the Swedish fish shouldn't wriggle. But... <laughs> um... The bass is now also very interested in your hands, by the way. I let go of the fish. They swim out of your hand, and the bass chases them around the room. And it was, it was someone, um, you were going to do something, Nathan? Well, I was just waiting for the circle of life to start playing, but I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, All right, everybody. Enjoy. That was over. Enjoy the remake. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna so, I'm gonna open the cage to Scar's <laughs> cage. Does Scar have a cage? Did I do that? Somewhere probably. Okay. Okay. It's so Florian, but it does not look at all like Scar. No. Oh, no. So I'll read you back through what you know. Okay. You have these candies. Um okay. and then you have the keys to all the enclosures and stuff. You have the the animals that are most important to you right now is the sock monkey and the bass, the clockwork birds, the <laughs> lion and tiger, the stuffed yellow bear with the ribbon. Um, the gray stuffed carrot, yep, and the stuffed elephant, and the stuffed yellow bear is clinging to you desperately and does not want to let go. It is probably the cutest thing you guys have ever seen. <laughs> and then you have the notes on the board, which say that Bernard likes banana, so you've already determined that's the monkey. And then Charlie yeah. schools meat oh. for James, and, meat for James and John, nerds for the birds. Sam eats peanuts and Smarties for Amario. I grab some Smarties and give them to the bear. He loves you and will never leave you. Can I just say I love this room? I'll grab some of the peanuts back here for my elephant, the peanut M&Ms for my elephant, buddy. He toots at you angrily and sprays blue fluff in your face. Oh, hey. And then, from the corner, you hear a squawking noise, and it says, Sam's like peanuts. Peanut. Peanut. Sam's like peanuts. Mm, Sam likes peanuts. Mm, pretty bird. Mm, Sam likes oh, peanuts. Okay, here. So you're giving Sam these, peanut, uh, these peanuts M&Ms? Yeah. He takes some gratefully from your hand, and he whistles and twitters at you. You can now talk to Sam. All right. Elephant and bird. Doing pretty well. I take the gummy steaks and give them to James and John. They stop fighting, and they eat the steaks, and they, they like you very much. They rub up on your, they rub your um, ankles. I quite like this room. I'll be back after we save Santa. Santa might have gotten a new employee. <laughs> Three quarters elf already, so, you know, doing, doing you pretty never... well. Yeah. Work some of his Christmas magic. Nerds for the birds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, Sam might know something about some, anything else you need to do in the room. So you can talk to him and he can tell you things too. Since you fed him. Our gray parrot. So you gave nerds to the birds. Right? Am I assuming you did that? Yeah, I, I gave nerds to the birds. So you throw them on the ground like birdseed. They lay them on the ground and peck it up for a while. Then they fly off and they, they sort of circle about the room happily. And they all sort of perch on the, one of the cages and kind of stare at you, and wondering if you're going to feed them more. Some of them start singing Christmas carols, because why not? Because it's festive. Let's just go of with course. it. Of course. Let's just go with it. So you can talk to the gray parrot now. That's yes. right. So yes. You can talk to the gray parrot. Okay. So Snowball just wants to uh, ask the gray parrot, um, Excuse me, Mr. Parrot, of questionable knitting. I believe you'll knit of some sort. Sam is a pretty bird. Well, we think very highly of ourselves, don't we? Uh, I was wondering, uh, do you know anything about Santa? Oh, Santa! Say, help Santa! Mm. Sam is a pretty bird! Help Santa! Mm, the force be with you! Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing good, <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, Big you're... green man! <laughs> Sam is a pretty bird! Sam does not like Big Green Man! A Big Green Man? Wait... A big green man. This this takes a turn for the worst. I don't know if I like this gr green man you speak of. Did he have anything to do with the fact that you are currently in this room? Sam is a pretty bird. No. No. Wait. Sam is a pretty bird. Aren't we just full of uh, self-confidence? Peanuts. I am like peanuts. <laughs> I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, why are the other candies in the door? We have gummy steaks, nerds, Smarties, peanut M&Ms, Mike and Ike's, licorice, Hershey Kisses, an assortment of jelly beans, and all sorts of other things. Basically anything you can think of. All right. But those are the, those are the main ones. 
Is uh, there anything else on the chart? Um, not anything of an importance. Nothing you can tell. Sam might know something about the animal's eating habits, though. Mr. Sam, I was wondering, does anything eat Tootsie Rolls? I know Sam is a pretty bird. You don't himself. have to tell me that, but... <laughs> Sam prides himself. He's a very prideful bird. Ken. He prides himself and he pays no attention. You, you never took conversation in manners class, now did you? <laughs> We'd never get last three days in the socialite circle, but hey, right? Anything uh, else you guys want to ask him? Book butterfly? DC? I'm still trying to feed the animals. Okay. Well, feeding t- um, the elephant may be important to how you get out of this room. I asked who ate the chocolate kisses. The Sam's still printing himself. This is a hint. Sam will probably not give you very much, give you any information if it's not helpful. He will probably just repeat how he's a pretty bird and print himself constantly. I'm getting that. Can I hold up some peanut M&Ms? Sure. Sam, mm, peanuts, Sam like peanuts. And he pops up and then hops onto your hand and eats the peanuts. I ask Sam what the elephant eats. Thomas likes licorice. Mm, yeah, Sam is a pretty bird. Thomas likes licorice. I give him a few more peanuts. And he right. flutters back to his perch. Okay. Anyone else, is anything, anyone else that wants to do? If I put all the candy in the middle of the room. Ooh. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Are we putting all the candy in the middle of the room? Let's just see what happens. I'm, I'm going to grab some of the licorice and feed my elephant friend. Thomas um, trumpets gratefully, and you feel a burden from your mind that has been lifted. I think for all intents and purposes, you have successfully addressed the elephant in the room. Would you agree, James? I would agree. You've successfully so, yeah. addressed the elephant in the room. You got an elephant, and now a bird's talking to me. Life is good. And I have a bear. <laughs> and a lion and a tiger, maybe. I'm not sure about them, but I definitely have a bear. <laughs> oh my. Um, <laughs> <we'll play. laughs> I, I I hold out my hand to see if the elephant wants to come along for the ride. Like he would love to. My hand. All right, Thomas, join the party. You guys are now free to leave the room. You have solved the puzzle. However, there may be still things to do here. Hmm. Whether you want to do them is up to you. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> out i'm just gonna stay here and feed the animals i'm very i am very happy with play, playing with the animals and i'm coming back here snowball's gonna just like release all of the candy from all of the drawers and then go through the open door <laughs> let the you. front gates open <laughs> behind you you hear the beginnings of an african stampede <laughs> no, <Slovenia. laughs> hey i think we found scar I'll uh, I'll follow through the door once the stampede starts, cause yeah. <laughs> Will you join them, Book Butterfly? Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, your party, which now includes Thomas and Amarillo, um, head out the door and into the next area. Will Aurora quit inside to work for Santa Claus? Will Luth pull off an elf costume in time for the Paris fashion show? Will Snowball ever get to set things on fire? Will the day be saved by stuffed animals? Will there be more insane puzzles? Find out in our third and final episode of Operation Santa Drop next week. Until then, make sure to join us at Delvecast.com for even more merriment, and thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our shiny level patrons, Dominic Perry and Bonnie Ainsworth. And to stay apprised of all our goings-on, follow us on Facebook and on Twitter, at Delve Podcast. We hope you are thoroughly enjoying the new year, and still have enough Christmas spirit in you to enjoy the conclusion to this live play. And remember, when life gives you coal, make cola. Farewell for now.